Jonathan Clements, congratulations on your brand new money guide for 2015. So tell me, what's the number one thing investors need to know about for their money in the new year? Well, the number one thing people need to worry about coming into the new year is whether their portfolio is still in balance. And we had a great year for U.S. stocks last year. And a lot of people are going to find that when they look at their portfolios, that they have more in stocks than their target portfolio weight, whatever that is. And that means the one thing you should be doing during the initial days of 2015 is rebalancing your portfolio. And the market's giving you that opportunity. We've had this nice couple of days here in the market. So if it's time to rebalance, this is a good time to do it. People also think about their taxes in January. They're getting their statements from all the different brokerages and their workplaces. So what should they know about their taxes heading into tax season? Well, I brought, wouldn't focus so much on your tax bill for 2014. I mean, that's already said. It's a little late for that. What you want to think about is what sort of tax year you're, you're going to have in 2015. And here's the number one thing I would think about. If for some reason you're going to have unusually low taxable income in 2015, let's say you're out of work, let's say you just retired, you haven't yet started drawing down your retirement accounts or claiming Social Security, this could be a great chance to take advantage of that low tax bracket. And the way you might do that is to convert part of your traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. You might sell those stocks where you have big winners, but not really interested in holding the shares anymore. Having a year with low taxable income is a great opportunity. Don't waste it. Should I buy a house in 2015? Maybe not me personally, but investors watching this video right now, should they go out and buy a house? I think this is a pretty good time to be a home buyer for two reasons. One, home prices are still 9% below their mid-2006 peak. And two, we have mortgage rates below 4%. They're at record low rates. If you need to buy a home and get financing for it, this is a great time to be borrowing. All right, speaking about yields, let's talk about bonds. What should somebody do with their bond portfolio? Because people say the bond bull market is over. So should they do something in early 2015? It's a great question. I mean, we know that interest rates could go lower. They could go to 1%. They could go to half a percent. But I can tell you what, Craig, they ain't going below zero. We know that there is a downside limit to interest rates, whereas the potential rise in interest rates is infinite. So I would say if you're a bond investor, probably you want to be focusing on the short, shorter end of the maturity spectrum. If you want to take risk, you probably want to take it on the stock side of your portfolio. And speaking of the stock side of your portfolio, last year, the active managers really did not beat their indexes. I think 80% or more lost to the indexes. So should 2015 be the year where people just say, forget about all those mutual fund managers. I'm just going to put it in the indexes. That's what people have been doing for the past decade. You go back 10 years ago, 18% of fund industry assets were in index funds. Today, it's 35%. People have seen the numbers. They know how active managers perform. And the answer is not great. So if you want to catch the market's performance and outpace most active investors, yeah, you should be indexing. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. Always great. My pleasure, Greg. And thank you for watching The Street.